Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank series. If you're joining us for the first time, this is the video series where you get access to my free practice questions. This is basically like a question bank, but in video format. My goal here is to use second and third order questions that challenge your brain to not necessarily learn new content, but to develop the how and the why when it comes to questions on USMLE and Comlex. We're going to train your brain to think like a high yield test taker that wants to solve a puzzle and unlock the key to working backwards and getting these answers correct. So let's jump right in. A 40 year old female with no past medical history presents to your office for yearly routine evaluation. She complains of intermittent hoarseness and difficulty swallowing. Her vitals reveal no major abnormalities. On exam, you palpate a nodule posterior to the sternohyoid muscle. The patient is sent for further testing and a biopsy of the affected area reveals sheets of cells surrounded by an amyloid stroma. Which of the following genetic mutations is associated with the aforementioned condition? A. Pax8 PPAR gamma B. ROS C. RET slash PTC D. BRAF or E, men 2A and 2B. Pause the video if you want some time to reread the question and think about this before I give you the correct answer. Okay, the correct answer to this question is choice E, men 2A and 2B. Let's go back to the clinical vignette and go through it and highlight the important information that you should have been paying attention to. So the first thing you wanna notice in this question, but in any question, is the the sex of the patient and the age of the patient because that's very telling. We've got a 40 year old female. Then we want to look at symptoms. Symptoms include hoarseness and difficulty swallowing or dysphagia. We see that there's a nodule posterior to the sternohyoid muscle. So you see symptoms, you see age, you see sex, and now you see an actual physical exam finding. The thing that absolutely seals this diagnosis is the last part that's highlighted and that's sheets of cells surrounded by an amyloid stroma. So usually when you're given a histological description like that, the test writer is giving you the answer. This is an answer only of one type of diagnosis. So you've got a nodule posterior to the sternohyoid muscles, so that should make you think of a thyroid nodule. And then they give you the biopsy results which are basically telling you this is a type of thyroid cancer. Specifically, we're talking about medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. Now, for those of you that like the full typed out explanation so that you can study and get the whole picture, I have it on this slide for you. So a thyroid cancer usually affects women more than men and typically occurs between ages 40 to 60 years old. The biggest risk factor includes a past exposure to radiation or a family history of thyroid malignancy. On exam, patients might have a thyroid nodule. Many patients might be asymptomatic. The definitive diagnosis is made by fine needle aspiration, also known as FNA, although initial studies could include thyroid labs or a thyroid ultrasound. Thyroid cancer is treated with thyroidectomy, which means removing the thyroid, which might involve several high yield complications. So this is very important to know because you might see these complications as part of the question. Hypocalcemia due to removal of the parathyroid, persistent hoarseness due to damage of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and dysphagia or dysphonia due to damage to the recurrent or superior laryngeal nerves. The various types of thyroid cancer include papillary, follicular, medullary, and undifferentiated. And this question, as you'll see in just a second, basically was asking you which type of thyroid cancer are we dealing with. Um, and identifying that requires you to know the genetic association. Papillary cancer is the most common and carries a good prognosis. Histologically, it shows samoma bodies with nuclear grooves. It's associated with RET PTC and BRAF mutations. Follicular also carries a good prognosis. Histologically, it shows uniform follicles that tend to invade the thyroid capsule and local vasculature. It's associated with ROS and PAX8 PPAR gamma mutations. Medullary arises from parafollicular C cells. This type of thyroid cancer actively produces calcitonin, and histologically, it shows sheets of cells arranged in an amyloid stroma. It also stains positive with Congo red. It's associated with MEN2A and MEN2B mutations. 
Lastly, undifferentiated usually carries a very poor prognosis, and it's the lowest yield cancer to know because it doesn't have any major genetic associations. So I've kind of given you the answer in that very long-winded explanation, but let's just approach this um, concisely as if that explanation wasn't even in this video. So you know you're probably dealing with thyroid cancer because of the, the symptom and the nodule, and you're given the histological description. So how this question works is you look at the histo histological description and you say to yourself, it's thyroid cancer. Knowing that it's thyroid cancer, it's probably either going to be follicular, medullary, or papillary because undifferentiated hardly ever shows up. It's just very low yield. So you're choosing between these three, papillary, follicular, and medullary. With that in mind, you absolutely need to know the genetic associations. So in your brain, now you're looking at A, B, C, D, and E and working backwards. You're saying, okay, choice A says PAX8 PPAR gamma. Which type of thyroid cancer is that associated with? And once you make that connection, the question is then, is that type of thyroid cancer described as, quote, sheets of cells surrounded by an amyloid stroma, end quote. So you see, this is a second or maybe even third order question where you have to work backwards given the histological description and pair that with the genetic mutation. So let's go through these answer choices and first pair up which of these genetic mutations is associated with which type of thyroid cancer. So choice A and B, PAX8, PPR gamma, and ROS are both associated with follicular carcinoma. Choice C and D, RET PTC and BRAF are both associated with papillary carcinoma. And that's why choice E is the correct answer, because that is the genetic mutation associated with medullary thyroid carcinoma. Now let's pause for a second and imagine a scenario where you didn't know the genetic associations. So you're looking at A, B, C, D, and E, and you honestly just don't know this. You didn't you didn't think to study it, perhaps you didn't memorize it effectively, and now you're taking this question and you're thinking to yourself, damn, there's no way I could possibly get this right. What I would suggest to you is that that is a defeatist attitude. And the way to think about this question is to think like a high yield test taker, right? That's the way I want you to think. And the way to approach this question, if you don't know the genetic associations, is to ask yourself, what might they have written in the clinical vignette if they wanted me to pick follicular, if they wanted me to pick papillary, if they wanted me to pick medullary and work backwards and get any bit of information that you possibly can to figure out what the correct type of thyroid cancer is and then do your best to guess based on knowing the correct type. So if they wanted you to think follicular, what they might have written is either invasion of the thyroid capsule and vasculature or they might have described the histology as uniform follicle morphology. And because both of those statements are absent, it's probably not follicular. So if you don't fully know ROS and PAX8 PPR gamma, maybe you only know one of them and you know that one of them is associated with follicular, you can eliminate that answer if you know that this isn't follicular because the question stem didn't say invasion of thyroid capsule, uniform follicle morphology. Likewise, for papillary, if the question wanted you to think papillary, they would have given you somoma bodies, nuclear grooves, or they might have described empty appearing nuclei with central clearing, which is to say that there's orphan any nuclei in the papillary carcinoma tissue. Um, if they don't describe it in the vignette, which obviously I didn't in this example, I told you sheets of cells surrounded by an amyloid stroma, which is the description for medullary. But if they wanted you to pick papillary, they could either say somoma body, say nuclear groove, describe, quote, empty appearing nuclei with central clearing, or they don't even have to describe it to you. They can just show you a picture. So if you saw one of these two images, they want you to pick papillary carcinoma, right? So you see the somoma bodies, you see the orphan antinuclei, but they don't literally or explicitly give you the term. They're still describing papillary carcinoma. So again, lots of different ways to think about this. The bottom line is that you had to know genetic associations. But what I'm suggesting to you is that you, if you don't know all of the genetic associations, figure out what you do know. Work backwards, eliminate information or incorrect answer choices based on the limited knowledge that you do know. And that, that process that I just described is how you score 
a 270 on USMLE, or a 650 on Comlex. You need to think like a high yield test taker. So I hope that this video was useful to you. Again, my goal is not to necessarily teach you content, but to train your brain to figure out other ways to get the answer correct.